I I got really interested in the socket stream project, and um, that's this asynchronous project built on Node.js that uses socket I/O and, and uh, allows you to do bidirectional messaging and stuff like that. It also embeds all the sort of ConnectJS framework and some framework stuff. Am I speaking loud enough, or should I speak? A little bit louder. Okay. Um, so I got interested in doing a project on this, and um, at the same time, some of my partners are here, uh, Yan is over there, and wave your hand Yan, and, and Ming was behind uh, Okay. So they had this project called Guest Mob. And Guest Mob is, is I think I, I, I could do it justice by saying Yan put it together because he was pissed off at how much uh, Expedia was overcharging people for <laughs> hotel rooms. <laughs> So for me, it was like, cool, it's like this very standard sort of commerce app in a way. You know, lots of very standard things people do with commerce apps. But it was, it was a chance to apply these new technologies in a very sort of commercial, very um, iconic, iconic setting, you know, the, uh, standard set of stuff. Um, at the same time, you know, Yan, Yan had some code that was built in PHP and was kind of page oriented and all that. And, um, I had previously done something with Node.js, and I knew all the kind of cool things you could do on the server with that, and all the asynchronous processing and stuff like that that I could do with it. Uh, and I had also used Socket.io a bit, so I was like, okay, cool, let's try this stuff, and let's try this new Socket Stream stuff. So Socket Stream is kind of raw. It's on 0 0.2 at this point. Um, and they're getting to 0 0.3, but they're it's slowly, slowly, slowly only barn since the days on that project. Um, and kind of almost production ready. <coughs> However, I will say here that, that we have this project now and it's actually in production. It's actually live and it does work. It's cool. And it scales really nicely and all that kind of stuff. So um, quickly, probably the best thing to do is to actually show you the website um, and get your cheap hotel room habits. Okay. So, Okay, guess what looks kind of like that. Where's the backbone connection? Um, <laughs> I didn't say anything about backbone. Uh, what I did is I, I, I also wanted to do backbone um, for this project, and nobody had done backbone really seriously on socket stream. And oh, there was a chance to do that. Huh? Not true. Yeah, well, okay, at, at the time, at the time. <laughs> okay. Uh, in addition, what, I, what, what we did in this project, and I can, I can get in some detail if we want and then later or something like that, but um, I, I, I did a, a cross-platform backbone implementation, so it's both server and client. So then I'm able to share models with Node.js since it's all JavaScript. It's all CoffeeScript. It's key. So I, I can share here. models yeah, between server and client. Yeah. You guys should talk. Yeah, okay, please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk. Um, this is really exciting. It was, it was a pain in the butt. Um, you know, there was a lot of stuff to get the sync proc working and stuff like that. I don't know details about that. That is it's not really in this context, but um, it all worked eventually. Um, and it, was, it was a struggle. Um, this is Gas Mob. This is the, the website. First of all, I'm going to log out. Um, going and okay, so I guess Mob uses Facebook. Um, a new way to book hotels. Uh, I'll get into details about why it's new and stuff like that. But it's not just for hotels, but uh, um, the, the log into Facebook it happens to be already logged in. So uh, uh, there we go. And that's Nikki. That's the old Nikki out in the corner there. Um, so there's various things you can do. You know, you find a deal, you choose a destination. You might want to go to Denver and pick a date, stuff like that. For standard stuff, submit, doink, and so it's all backbone. Uh, this is another view. Uh, these hotels, these are the, the, the number under is the best price you get on Expedia. And this is the price that guess what gives. Uh, these are all kind of nice and quick cool hotels and stuff like that. It's a little raw, but it's it's an early version and it'll get better. Um, get to stuff like this, get maps in there. Um, other stuff. What is AD? What, what shows. are the points on the map? Sorry? What are the points on the map? Oh, oh these the are the log notes. Okay, okay, so, so this, the, the, the idea of the product it, you know, involves putting hotels into a collection. And 
when you book hotels, you don't book a specific hotel, you book a collection. So that allows you to sort of play games with prices and stuff like that. So, so they book through guest mob, but, but it's not actually booked at a hotel, except when we feel like it, you know, when, when we think it's the right time to book at a hotel. So it's a, it's a way to play with future prices, stuff like that. So it's kind of, it's kind of clever on that level. Um, and that's why it's able to, one of the reasons why it's able to get these price discounts, it sort of shows different discounts, et cetera, et cetera, and people book now, do other stuff, um, et cetera, so credit card payments, all that kind of stuff. So integrates with payments, integrates with all the kind of things you can do with do a standard commerce app. It has these like special deals, um, coupons and stuff like that. That's, that's in the process of rolling out right now. Um, there's a Facebook integration, so this shows uh, Nikki, same Nikki, she got these coupons. Um, clicks on the coupon, comes back to Gap Bob, and you can discount them, an additional discount on top of the same discount, and then it allows you to build sort of a viral network of, of advertising and stuff like that that's run by the users of the site. Um, and, okay, so that's. <clears throat> and that gives you an idea of the website. Uh, I'm going to run through this really quickly. Um, that's not bad. Okay, so the other thing I want to throw at you is um, it, not, not to get too much into the code right now. Um, well, I'll throw this other thing, which is I, I like playing with them. I use my maps. Again, the, the subject of a very, very long discussion, but a uh, uh, no quick summary here. Pat, which my, my UI. Okay, there it is. Okay. This is, this is my, my alternative PowerPoint. <laughs> Inkscape is not the world's greatest, but it works. Okay, so this, this lays out kind of <coughs> the issues around, uh, stand up now, this is, this is all the issues around building the app and, and it's the different data models and, and uh, uh, you know, inquiries, and you make these inquiries and you get these prices. In, in order to run a system like this, you have to gather prices from all these, out, all these external systems. And that sort of involves some data mining and stuff like that. So we actually have to gather prices in. We have to do some calculations on them. We come up with this thing called the called the magic price, which is somewhere over here. It's, it, it, you know, the magic price is, is is based on some little internal algorithms that, that Dan sort of is is building uh, all the time. And um, another thing really interesting about building an app like this that, that, that I was kind of thrown off because I'm not a great business guy, right? It's like you, you can take this thing on the web that you don't even have <laughs> and you can, you can turn it into a commodity and you can make it your commodity and you can then sell it. And I just thought it was cool. <laughs> like you don't even have these hotels, but suddenly you have this inventory. But you know, one of the times one of the hotels called us out, they're like, where did you guys get your inventory? <laughs> like, well, there's some program. I didn't tell them, but there's some program that goes out and just gets a bunch of prices and Said, okay, this is what we think our inventory is. Uh, so it's cool. I mean, what's well, cool? So there are reasons to use a web, okay? <laughs> uh, besides just eyeballs and, and this can actually do real commerce on. So why does this work? About, about that. That's why it's called cut commodification and, and building services. Um, this gets into some, we, we do a lot with tracking. So I'm going to do a quick summary here. I'm not going to go the details. We do a lot with tracking. So there's, there's, the prices themselves, as well as how you know how you advertise on Facebook and stuff like that, is also something that needs some sort of pseudo AI that that has to track. It, it tracks users and it tracks it tracks behaviors and it, it, it tracks uh, it bookings and things like that and and feeds back into the system and, and built this whole action system that that, that feeds back in. So it's, it's another word for it, which is event sourcing. You know, it, it, uh, um, it's all built on MySQL, so, it's, uh, so I, I didn't use Mongo or anything. I tried like the Mongo approach previously, and I just it didn't want to scale <laughs> the way uh, the way a traditional database wanted to scale. 
So all the, all the models are built on top of a uh, MySQL backend. Um, let's see what else. So uh, you know, there's stuff. That this so this mob thing. So the mob thing is like one of the ways to, to save money on the ho on, on the hotels we actually book is is that um, if enough people start booking on a hotel, there's a certain date, and if we have like 20 or 30 people wanting the same cluster at the same date, we can go to the hotels and we can have them run an auction against um, against those 20 people. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a nice model. So uh, you, you can go there and you can get them to, to really drive the price down. And you can get really close to the deadline. So so that's the other thing about that that's really important, is that there, there's sort of this, this um, Somewhere, this is the first time I've talked about it. So, <laughs> um, somewhere in here it talks about the, the, the time shift. You know, there's a, there's a time shift involved. And whenever you start playing with time shifts like that, so you sell a commodity on this end, and, and you can control how much time there is before you actually have to realize the commodity, that allows you to sort of do a lot of stuff with price. Um, price is very interesting, it's always interesting. Um, so, clients, browser servers. Um, the price system has, you know, it has like this automation, so it has to actually, it, it's, it's getting prices from Kayak, it's getting prices from Hotels.com, stuff like that, it's running different timers. All that's built into the Saga Stream Node.js system, and it's all built as one, as one code system, but you can sort of choose which, uh, through configuration, you can choose which parts are going to work on different things, and you can run into separate, as different instances that do different functions, but it's all sort of the same code base. It's very, very nice, and you could even have one server doing it all. Um, what else about that? It's in here's the maps, it's showing the hotels. The other thing in, in the site that I showed, because I showed you where you book and you go through these pages, it's, it's also kept really simple. So it's like, uh, you know, in Yan's terminology, it's like page one, page two, page three, page four, page five. <laughs> that's it, that's a whole thing, five pages. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Allows you to track sort of follow throughs. It allows you to to, to, to to see how far people get, you know, see how successful different different approaches you have, and we're constantly analyzing that and stuff like that. Um, this the it talks about the auctions a little bit here, and, and uh, um, the views. I have we have a lot of views. There's backbone views. There's about uh, sort of getting bad stuff. Uh, it's probably not readable at, at the size it is, but so I, I pretty apologize. Um, but uh, yeah, we uh, so it's a bunch of these are all these different views that we're running back home. There's no doubt much better ways to organize this and all that, but uh, this, is, this is what it is. And uh, I just have these flaps so you can't uh, see the code that was through all the parts. Um, the same stuff, I'll do a quick run through that. So the sink is running over socket stream? So yeah, so cool. So it's so so yeah, socket stream is it's just it's it's this it's it's socket.io and it's it's this place where there's a socket connection made up and it created at, when it when it fires up and runs through web sockets. If it just it has web socket transport, otherwise it has fallback transports to the and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so so all the communication, so I, I, I did sort of a fake Ajax that sits on top of the, the, the socket I.O. transport and it's much faster than the traditional Ajax to so like fire up the connection. Um, so as far as, as far as the server is concerned, you can run sort of standard you know, Ajax calls, they look like standard Ajax calls. You can go to the browser and you can do Ajax, stuff like that. Um, so that's interesting about it. Um, does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, the router is interesting, doing the router stuff, and, and you know, I'm happy to talk to people in this room about better ways to do all this, but we, we had to deal with the authentication. We have we have different roles for users, so we have the admin roles, and we have the hoteler roles, because the hotelers have to come in, and they have to bid, and stuff like that. We have customers, so, so there's different roles. So I did a thing with App Router, which is um, you know, into a little bit of meat here. Um, but not too much time in the week. But I, I did a thing with App Router where I essentially, you know, created these different routers that, um, based on the authentication, just switch in different routers that have a collection of, of router URLs. <coughs> yeah. Do you have any 
you have like views which where you have like different permission depending on the permission you have, you have to speak have, up because I don't hear that one. <laughs> do you have views where depending on the permission you have you have different representation of that? Yeah, view? yeah. Yeah. How, so how do you handle like the, the, the permissions the actual user has in the role? How, how, how do I how do I filter that so if somebody yeah, tried to get like what, what kind of actions they can do? I, I, I gotta say that you know there's a bunch of things I need to do still about security. <laughs> uh, but do, you can't get to certain views unless it's context, it's all context oriented. So you can't get to certain views unless you have the router privileges. Mm -hmm. If you try to route to something that you don't have privileges to, it, it'll just kick you back to the search or something or, or the home page or the login page. Do you do this that on a level of the role or just on the role? On the role level, okay. yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's covered the role level. The role, the role is connected to this router part. And, and also, I have to get some some, authentic, some, uh, some security stuff built into the sync, <coughs> sync stuff, too, which I think earlier somebody talked about. And probably did a much better job than I did. I don't think I have it fully uh, as far as handling every, every uh, fetch coming back from the server, and I need to do some of that. Yeah, but it, I, was, I was surprised it worked. I had no idea. But it's got to go live in a month. Okay, cool. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for joining us. Okay, thank you so much.